Hi guys. Let me connect the Wi-Fi first. Okay, hi. Nice uh, meeting you guys. Thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to share what I'm, I'm doing. Uh, today I'll be, my name is Albert, by the way. Uh, I run a startup called Fine. So uh, today I'm going to share uh, one feature that we are using in our platform for our, uh, what our startup is using at the moment. Right, so uh, what is the project that we are doing? Uh, just a little bit of background, our company is called Fine. What we do is that we do, uh, if you drop your phone on the floor and it cracks, we'll send somebody to your house to fix it, right? And then after he, he fix it, then we'll send an email with a, say thank you for your, uh, you know, thank you for your order, this is the invoice, this is how much, and you, know, you can click a button, it will open a PayPal page and you can make payment, and you can redirect it back to our, to, to a thank you confirmation feedback form kind of thing. So this is what uh, the background of the, the features that we have. Uh, so uh, what we do is that what I'm going to go through today is like how to integrate Meteor with our PayPal uh, Express, Express checkout function. Basically, uh, of course, there's other uh, uh, payment platform available around, right? Like Braintree that has a Meteor package by itself. But uh, why we are using PayPal is uh, we do because we, we started with a, a bit of a lean method. So we don't really develop anything until uh, we have quite a good number of customers and we know this is working and we, we already have cash in our PayPal account so it doesn't make sense for us to use other things. But um, there are some challenges in doing uh, PayPal Express integration so I think I can share some of the challenges and how we, we overcome it and, and see whether you guys can help us to improve as well. We will be happy to learn from you. So how does the Express Checkout works for us? Uh, this is not from PayPal official documentation, it's just how we, we get it working is that when the customer come in our system and they say, hey, I want to make payment, you know, if they receive an email with a button, pay button, I want to make payment, they will, uh, the request we can direct it to our server and then uh, we will contact PayPal server for a, a, a payment URL, which they will come back and give us a URL and then we'll pass that URL to the customer where they go to a pay, PayPal payment page, basically. So that pay, PayPal payment page will actually uh, once they enter their credit card or you pay by PayPal account, they, they actually authorize us to collect money from their account, which we will do that as well. Then we will tell PayPal, hey, we want to deduct this amount of money from your account, right? Uh, sometimes uh, it's actually come in a two-step authorization and payments because like if you stay in a hotel, they say uh, you cannot, you know, drink uh, the mini fridge more than once or you need to pay for it, that kind of thing. So they can actually authorize your card for deduction, but they may not deduct it. Yeah, that's, that's kind of thing. A little bit of, about PayPal APIs. They have a, a few different APIs around. First of all is the REST API. REST API is the latest new API, but it's not able to accept credit card payment in Singapore. So uh, if, if you are developing something new and you do not know about this, you may waste uh, quite a fair bit of time. I have verified this by sending them an email and they say, oh, PayPal Pro is only doable in PayPal Pro account, which is only available in the US and some country. So you need to stick with the old classic API. So uh, I, my suggestion is that if you actually want to do PayPal API in the future, you email them first and say, which account can I use in Singapore, right? So uh, first step, uh, of course, you need to do uh, API credentials where you need to you know, go to developer.paypal.com, you create, uh, 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 for a beginner, you can create a, uh, API credentials. And then you know, uh, after you test it, you can go live, you, you get a live credential as well. So uh, uh, API, basically, whether it's REST or not, it is actually, you can actually get everything working using CURL, right? You can send a HTTP request with a header, you know, what's the user ID, password, method, blah, blah, blah. And then you get a response and you send another request response, but that can be quite a painful, right? It's, it's like a nightmare, right? So you want to do, uh, if you want to do that, Strictly, you can use a HTTP package, then you know you do a HTTP call, blah, blah, blah. but that's kind of painful. So, uh, but uh, PayPal does not have a package for Meteor. Sorry, this is the other way around. Meteor does, doesn't have a package for PayPal. Right? So, what you need to do is that we need to use NPM package, right? Unless you want to do it by the CURL method where you, you do it manually and set all the headers. So uh, what I did, what we did is that uh, we use uh, this NPM package called PayPal EC. So your Meteor platform need to allow uh, normal node uh, NPM 
uh, package to be used within your, your product, which you need to add this package called Meteor Hex NPM that will allow you to use a normal node and uh, packages inside your Meteor projects. And after you add this, you can install your NPM package, which is uh, by using this command. And you can, there will be a, a file called package.json will be generated. So you need to copy paste first the, uh, the package name and what's the version number and, and stuff like that. Right? This is generally the big overview. Yeah. I, I sorry, is, it, is it necessary to put a Google? Um, okay, so far when I, I use it, I use it global, but is, is that the right way to do it? You mean uh, your NPM install minus G? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You need to put I think so, yeah. yeah. But because I'm not a very good Node.js developer. You don't really need that. Like, uh, we run it, we don't have to Oh, yeah, yeah, when I run with your... Oh, so you're saying if I don't do this, I just do this? No, no, you still need the, that from, without the minus G. Oh, I still need without the minus G. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 because when you deploy to server, um, they will install it for you. Well, then uh, inside oh, the code, you're going to need to minus G. When I... I will go through the code after this, perhaps. Oh. They will be better. Okay, why I use minus G is because I went to this guy GitHub documentation and they use minus G, so <laughs> just follow the thing. So I have not tried using without minus G, but probably if you guys say it's okay, we can give it a shot. I think you done it correctly because if you use npm install, that would only be for Node.js projects. It will only work for Node.js projects without without minus G. Oh. So let me just continue. So uh, I have a demo with this uh, URL and the, the, the user ID. So I'm, I'm going to just go through and open it up and you know, let's go through the code and, and just look at it from there, right? And this is uh, not a real account. So if you hack it, there's no money inside. <laughs> So I have a, a, a simple demo account. So I have a, a very simple one page form where I put in, you can key in an invoice number basically, and you can key the amount. And then you click pay now, then it will like open up a, a PayPal uh, payment page, right? So I just put in a random invoice number. $120.50, I click pay now. Opening a PayPal account. Uh, this guy is my test account, right? I have a, a few test accounts. So the password is for demo SG. If you are using a sandbox testing account, you can't really use a real PayPal or real credit card. You just need to use a predefined test account. So payment is processed. Then they will want to verify your delivery address, blah, blah, blah. So I, I just say, oh, payment is captured successfully. So if I log in as a seller, uh, and I see my, you know, my PayPal history, it will actually get deducted according to the amount that I, I did. You can check if you want to. <laughs> okay. So how does the code look like? Okay, it's a very simple uh, one pager app basically with some files. So uh, this is the, a simple template where we put in the invoice number and the amount and the pay, pay now button, right? So when I actually click a, a pay, pay now button, I will actually handle this. Of course, some basic logic that the amount must be a, a number and blah, blah, blah. So what I do is that I redirect the page into uh, my own URL using Iron Router. Is it too small? Right. Okay, how do I make it? 
slash invoice number slash amount which I will handle it in my router document so in my in my router whenever there is getfind.media.com slash payment slash the invoice number slash amount I will actually call this method to generate a PayPal uh, URL, which is will be calling a, which I will be calling the payment uh, PayPal at API itself. So I have my credential, my options, then I have this uh, this uh, I I will call this NPM require, you know, uh, to to create a new PayPal object, pass the parameters. Uh, this will be the written URL. So. When the payment is successful, it will return to this URL, and if the payment was cancelled, it will return to another URL, basically, right? So you can pass the amount, the description, everything. So uh, we will call this function and return a, a, a callback accordingly, right? Um, so this is the genera generation of the URL. So when then we are doing this uh, because uh, Node is a uh, asynchronous method while while Meteor. This method will make it a synchronous method where the, you will actually wait for it to come back and then you can use the URL for, for a return function. If we do not do this, then there will be some error like a fiber problem. It's really small, is it? Yeah, yeah sorry. Alright, is it too fast? Or is this okay? Yeah. So this is a general URL function where you can pass the transaction and we, we call it, uh, we, we call a, a method to, to generate the URL. Basically, it's as simple as call the NPM, right? And this is all built in uh, classes from the NPM package. And then return the URL if there is, right? Then pass back the URL to the iron router. And then after that, we just do a rewrite the header and then it will redirect to a new page so that they can make a payment. Once the payment is completed, it will actually do another route which is ah, payment return route. So we actually captured, oh, this is, this is done. We'll call a PayPal return function, which we will call the NPM package, and we'll do a reduction accordingly. Yeah. So far, am I, uh, is it okay? Any question? Yeah, it will actually wait for, for the thing to complete before it's... So will we like block it? Is it bad? Yeah. Uh, this case... Because you don't really want to do anything at all, you know what the last... You don't want to say thanks for posting the payment and then it doesn't go through. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we, we do need it to come back, like what you mentioned. Make sure that it's actually returned. So does, does, that, does that have any implication for like the current user? Uh, I, I hope there are so many people paying me until I have a, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> okay. but today I, I don't have, uh, but you would like to recommend our service to your friends, then <laughs> <laughs> uh, that will be a good problem. <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's a very interesting point to raise, um, because I'm pretty new in Meteor, we, we 
basically you learn for I basically learned for about two three months then just crazily develop a live application and push it out to the cloud. So, uh, but I when I do read the documentation that uh, what they actually do is that all the npm packages seems to block and use the async function. If I didn't do that, I have some error saying that fiber is not configured or something like that. So, uh, that documentation does request us to do that. But perhaps you guys are more expert to, to, to know how to handle that more problem. Yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> so how about comments or what do you guys think? Any? It's interesting. Because I, I looked at a few packages that do like these worker threads and like queuing. And I, was, uh, I had a similar problem when I was trying to figure out okay, what's the best way to not block up the server but have potentially like multiple synchronous threads running at the same time. Where mm. Each thread has to be synchronous. Like mm. That transaction has to complete, but you don't want to block the whole server up. Right? So right. I wasn't actually sure what was the best way to do it. I think this is the, the code that is of a question, yeah? Yeah, so yeah. whether this will block this the block running. The whole because as I understand, door.js has a different way of working. If you have response threads per request, it's, a tip, it's like a typical web server fashion where each request yeah. runs a separate thread. Mm. In which case, only that thread will get blocked, but another request will still process. Because this isn't native Meteor, this is a, a package written by somebody else. Yeah. But Meteor is built in up, on top of Node.js, no, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where in Node.js is right. is uh, single threaded. Yeah. Mm. So if something blocks, it blocks everything. Mm. Unless they implement something inside this method to, to not block it on its way. Because uh, if you learn the tutorial for or or the documentation of the okay, npm package, they actually recommend to use this for a method yeah. call. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I don't use that. Um, what I do is that uh, I will generate the URL, uh, then I will do, um, I will change the header to redirect it. Yeah, this one. Uh, I, that uh, meteor.call is just uh, if you want to use URL kind of approach, you set your own HTTP header, but that's very low level. So then you need to like handle the token, while the npm package actually do that for you. So you don't really need to do that. So what we do is that we rewrite the head so that it, it directs to a, a URL outside of your media package. Yeah. What, uh, this is just finding a server-side URL in the route plan route. The route, yes. It's yeah, server side a server-side server URL. So, it's not a server-side method. The reason why we are doing this, uh, because we want to keep the URL like this, if we directly generate the URL from PayPal and send it into an email in the customer to click, the, the URL will expire really fast, like an hour. So after your email comes, they open it the next day, they click, they say your token expires. So uh, we, we, when they click the pay now button or view invoice button, we will go to our server first, we generate a fresh token for them, then we will direct them to the PayPal pay payment package. Technically, you should not put the amount here. <laughs> this is just for demo purposes. 
Yeah, it's just the, the job number or the invoice number, then do a Mongo collection to pull out the amount, you know, do a proper thing. So otherwise, yeah. people can actually... Otherwise, it's <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> can we put negative numbers? <laughs> yeah, this is a demo set, man. Everything is... <laughs> yes? You found a bug. You found a bug. Oh, yeah, you're right, man. Should be passed float, right? Right. Mm. So you're missing a few cents. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I need to hire you, man. Your account has been cached. Yeah, it's a simple code. Uh, three files: uh, CSS, HTML, JS. Uh, one iron router, one class to to do a call to the npm package. Yeah. Any question? Can you scroll down a bit? So first, before you scroll, this is the link which does user will click on by email or yes and then the link below what is that for this one yeah this one is uh okay once you generate a, a paypal url you need to specify if the payment is successful mm. where does your user get redirected back I see. right so after you see that page you so fill in your credit paypal card. will redirect user right yeah. to this url okay. so uh you know get find on com payment return then the invoice number the amount then you do the processing accordingly this is the part where the actual money is being transferred. The first one is where the money is being authorized. So the user is telling that uh, this start, you, you allow this company to deduct an amount. And over here is that where the amount is actually getting deducted. Yeah. So you pass this URL to PayPal saying send yeah. it back, send the guy back here. Yeah. Correct. Which is PayPal is part of the API requirement. Yeah, it's part of the idea. You can specify what whichever you like, whichever out for. Oh, it doesn't block. This is a package for fibers, which you mentioned. It's a simulated synchronous thing. On Discord Wiki, there's a block post. So it's a simulated yeah. synchronized, but so actually it's not synchronized. You can sim I mean, try it out by opening separate terminals, doing a curl on each of them, and it's still respond. Maybe we should do that. Uh, we open a few terminals, but let me give you the real PayPal so that you can pay me. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll try that. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's, it's something that I didn't expect. So, yeah. so it just blocks that that particular. It makes that thing, that request synchronous. Yeah, but everything else. So, is yeah, it's still response. Oh, that's very tricky to get. You would use me here. Yeah, actually, if Meteor didn't do that, it may fail as a framework. So, but I can put this on GitHub with whoever wants to use it. Yeah, because I, I don't know how to make a package yet. I'm not sure how to fit or use it. I, I, I literally was just looking at it this last night as far as using the Meteor Auto Publish with the existing packages in it. I didn't but will, will it be a better idea to like use a CURL kind of HTTP call or do you wrap an NPM, make it a Meteor package? Because you're actually using other framework package. I guess CRL is, you know what's going on. There, there is uh, no, I was saying if you make your own like Meteor package for PayPal, is it better to wrap an NPM package or is it better to like write from the scratch? It's always better to write from scratch. <laughs> so you, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. 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 I mean, but, you know, you want to get things running in a day, just use it. Yeah. Well, I every, for every transaction, one cent gets transferred. Because if you create a Meteor package, you can create dependencies on other Meteor packages, but I don't know if you can create dependency on a, on a known package. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can document it, but you know, one of the nice things about Meteor's packaging system is that it auto installs dependent packages. 
packages as well. Right. Does that, so in this case, even via the Meteor Hacks NPM, if you install a package like Big Valley C, which then depends on whatever, foo, I would think that's the whole point of whoever made this Meteor Hacks. Yeah, I think, I think it does really like the dependencies, otherwise what would be the point? I'm pretty sure it does. When you run it, it meets your hacks and uh, it actually pulls it and then you see that. Yeah. Yeah. The NPM dependency. Yes. The NPM would be the one pulling the yeah. the dependencies, not meet your no. not meet your. And all these are installed on the local project level. I meet. So I, I I I was lost in the discussion about the global thing, but if when when you do meteor up or meteor deploy meteor. How does how will they know? How will they get to work? Well, you got this running with just me to deploy, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is uh, actually working on live application now, so we actually collecting payment using this. Hmm. Okay. So it kind of work. I don't need to install it on the server. So you don't have to run that npm install command on the server. Uh, and you don't yes. I actually cannot remember whether I did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe I did. Because in the package of this server, I saw it. Dependency there, right? But even though it's not a meteor dependency. Yeah, because you use the Meteor packages before it deploys it. If you think of like a little, when you do it on the command line, it's like I'm minifying, I'm packaging, and then I send. It doesn't just send code and then get packaged on the surface. By default, meteor doesn't need an No, no, no. No, no, no. I think it's here if I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think it's this guy, right? I'm not yeah. Probably this is the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't put anything there? No, yeah, it came out by itself. Yeah. When I when I run Meteor for the first time, he was like saying that he's doing some installation. Yeah, after that it's done. Do you have a package and JSON file in the folder? Any open? This guy? Yeah. Mm. It's basically the name and the version number. I if I'm not wrong now, there's zero point two point seven. So maybe you can try to change the version number. Can you show this This guy. Ah. I wish I had something for which I can judge. <laughs> <laughs> Monday. 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 <laughs>